All right, on this problem, the goal is to find a future value, an accumulated future value, and the information we're given, it's 19 year, $50,000 continuous income stream. So it's a constant function that's been compounded continuously at 2.5%. All right, so as we're trying to find this future value and the formulas down here on the bottom right, you're gonna notice that the future value depends on the present value. So before we actually do this computation for the future value that we want, we wanna use the present value formula and go and compute that first. So let's see if we can set this up. We're looking at an integral between zero and it's 19 years in the future, so zero and 19. Then our, our function, it's a constant function, 50,000 is gonna go in for big F of T multiplied by E raised to the negative 0.025T. And yes, I did switch from a percent over into a decimal as I expressed our rate. And then this is DT. All right, the first thing I may do in this case is move that constant out in front. So we can say 50,000 can come out in front, still looking at the integral from zero to 19, E raised to the negative decimal, DT. All right, to integrate this, we're gonna to need to do a U substitution. So it looks like something that we're comfortable with integrating. So off to the side here, I'm gonna go ahead and say, let U equal our inner function. So the exponent in this case. And then we're gonna take the derivative. So du equals negative 0.025 dt. Now we can replace the dt in our uh, integral here, but we don't have this negative 0.025. So let's rearrange this and just move it off to the other side. So I'm gonna divide both sides by this or multiply by one over that decimal. So I still have du on this side. That'll get dt on one side by itself. All right, next up, let's substitute in. So the 50,000 is coming along. And then we have E raised to the U power. And I wanna replace the DT with one over negative 0.025. And I'll go ahead and put that out in front and I'll have a DU at the end. Now, the next thing we wanna be careful about is we just substituted in and we changed T values to U values. So these bounds of integration, these were T values times zero to time 19 years. We wanna convert those over into U values. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my let statement where I said U was equal to negative 0.025T and I'm gonna substitute in there again. All right, the first one I'm gonna substitute in is 0.025 multiplied by my top bound of integration 19, and this works out to be negative 0.475. And then we're gonna plug in the zero as well. That should be an easy computation. Anything times zero is still gonna be zero. So our bounds of integration have changed. They're going from zero to negative 0 0.475. All right, now we're ready to take the antiderivative. So the antiderivative here is just gonna be e to the u. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 50,000 over negative 0.025 e to the u evaluated between zero and negative 0.475. Now it's just a matter of plugging in these bounds of integration and doing a subtraction in between. The constant I'm gonna leave out in front. No need to muddy the waters and bring that to the inside. So we go e and the top bound minus e and the bottom bound. All right, e to the zero power is the same thing as one. So as I put this into our calculator, I'm gonna keep all my decimal places, by the way, as we do this. So our uh, PV present value is gonna be 756229.8871. And you may be saying, well, why didn't you round to two decimal places or to the nearest dollar? Why I'm not rounding right now, even though it says round to the nearest dollar, is that once our future value rounded to the nearest dollar. So I'm gonna keep all my decimal places possible at this point. And then um, at the very end, when we fill into the future value, that's where I'll do my rounding. So that's all that remains on this is plug into the future value formula. So again, it's this entire number goes in for our present value, PV. Then we wanna multiply this by E raised to that same rate 
0 0.025 times t. All right, in this case, our time frame is going to be 19 years in the future. We want to know what this is worth. So I got this to be 1,216,028 dollars rounded to the nearest dollar. All right, so I hope this tutorial helps out as we work through a problem where you're asked to find the future value. Remember that formula requires the present value. So use the present value first, a lot of extra work just to get the future value. But I hope this helps out in understanding how to get the future value a little bit better. All right, good luck.